exclusive documentary about the communist country, Cuba. Before we get started, let's look at a few statistics of the country. The current population of Cuba, according to the World Factbook, is 11,075,244. The infant mortality rate in Cuba is currently at a rate of 4.83 per 1,000 lives born as compared to the United States. The life expectancy in Cuba is currently to 77.87, which is not more, much worse than our country. The literacy rate in Cuba is 99.8%, beating the United States in much worse in our literacy population. The HIV slash AIDS rate in Cuba is 0.10%, which is in fact better than the United States' HIV AIDS rate, which is at 0.6%. This is a chart of Cuba in 1950, having a population of 5,884,000 people. Then in 2000, the population gets a big leap to 11,102,000 people in the country. Estimated in 2050, the population would decrease to 9,897,000, most likely indicating the sign of a better economic situation. Cuba is in stage 2 of the population growth cycle. Overall death rates begin to decline, hygiene and the appearance of more advanced medical treatments reduce the detrimental effects of disease on the population. Cuba's geography is 110,000. 860 square kilometers and relatively speaking is slightly smaller than Pennsylvania with its neighbors being Haiti, Jamaica, Florida, and other islands. Cuba's climate is tropical, moderated by trade winds, and has dry and rainy seasons. The terrain of Cuba is mostly flat to rolling plains with rugged hills and mountains in the southeast. Let's, look at, uh, let's take a look at Cuba's history. In 1898, the U.S. defeats Spain, which gives up all claims to Cuba and sees it to the U.S. After long periods of its unwanted government, in 1959, Feliz Castro leads a 9,000-strong guerrilla army into Havana, forcing Batista to flee. Then Castro becomes Prime Minister and his brother Raul, the Cuban population. As Castro's new country needed economic help and other imported goods for its citizens, it teamed up with the Soviet Union. In 1962, the incident known as the Cuban Missile Crisis occurred. In February of 1962, in response to Cuba's alliance with the Soviet Union, President, President John F. Kennedy increased trading restrictions in February 1962, imposing an economic, commercial, and financial embargo against Cuba, which created economic instability distab in Cuba. In 1976 and 1981, Cuba sends troops first to help Angola's left wing MPLA withstand a joint onslaught by South Africa, UNITA, and the FNLA, and later to help the Ethiopian regimes defeat the Erythraeans and the Somalias. In 1988, he, he takes his troops out of Angolia and in the, we'll be having a special call from a guest to further explain the results of the the war, please, Harry Belafonte, explain the impact of Cuba's presence the in Cuban Cuba. The Cuban presence in Africa, and in particular in Angola, the history of Africa would have never been what it is now. One of the greatest friends that Cuba has is Nelson Mandela and his appreciation for what the Cuban people do. Well, thank you. As we go on, we'll find that in 1989. Nine, the Soviet Union collapsed and was no longer able to provide the island with cheap oil and a market for sugar exports, marking the beginning of the major economic problems. Then, on January 2011, U.S. President Barack Obama relaxes restrictions on travel to Cuba, allows tourism, and strengthens Cuba's economy and better relationships with between the two countries start to develop. And economic stability is <laughs> let's take a look at Cuba's government on February 18 2008 the elder Castro announced that he would neither seek nor accept the presidency or the post of commander-in-chief at the next meeting of National Assembly of People's Power thus effectively resigning from his position as the political and military leader of Cuba and giving it to his brother Raul Castro which is the president of the Council of State and president of the Council of Ministers, Raul Casarruez.
The legislative branch is a unicameral National Assembly of People's Power, which is 614 seats. Cuba, as it appears, it's mostly in services, industry, and a low percentage in agriculture, revealing its economic development ever since its low special period beginning in 1989, where there was an economic crisis forming. Now, an average Cuban gets 990,000, gets the capita of $9,900, which seems like a low amount, but since Cuba has very low prices, it can stretch to the average American pay grade. As it concludes, because of the high life expectancy, about 77 years and a low mortality rate and also a high literacy rate and a low HIV and AIDS rate, Cuba is considered a more developed country compared to the world as it can re be regarded in between due to stage 2 population growth, but it seems as it's entering stage 3 according to 2050 statistics and a larger senior population. The Culture of Cuba According to recent statistics from the World Factbook, the major language is Spanish and it seems as if the only major language that exists in Cuba today. As we go on, let's quickly take a look over the culture and religion chart and it seems Roman Catholic seems to be the most densely populated. As in 1998, Pope John Paul II visits Cuba and then from then on, more religious freedoms were given and the country seems to pull itself together again economically and spiritually. The major issues of Cuba. Illicit drugs, territorial waters, and airspace serve as transshipment zone for U.S. and European bound drugs. Established the death penalty for certain drug related crimes in 1999 and is a current problem today. Also, the economy in Cuba isn't perfect and is still experiencing problems today, but has recovered much and damages the quality. And since of the American embargo implemented 50 years ago, it still damages the quality of the life today and until a developed country. Even though all these problems persist, Cuba still stands today strong and proud of its nationalism and as a country, as part of Latin America.